In this week's episode, we're hoping it's in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, or is it Mother and Son? to TGI. Now it's getting a bit chilly in here. We've just done the back to school thing with our children and I confess that September is my least favourite month because I really don't like letting go of summer. Um, but my mum always thought, you know, autumn was so beautiful. I think it's just a bit messy. Do you have a favourite season? Am I alone in thinking that? I like autumn. Do you? Mm. I like the way it goes all nice and crisp and all the leaves of the trees change colours and all that. I love it. So you don't mind it getting colder? No. Okay, what about you, Mary? I I love summer. Um, I'm very keen on warmth uh, and I get very cold feet. So uh, winter is very difficult for me. So yeah, I love summer. summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you there. The older I get, it's it's just a heat thing. Yeah. But I I love the, the colours of the trees in autumn, especially this part of the world. It's beautiful. So you're going to retire to Benidorm when you retire then? You're going to be one of those? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Oiling himself up. <laughs> Thanks for that lovely image there. there. Well, I, I, on the uh, sun lounges. Uh, I'm going to use a Rosword segue. Uh, that really was just a way of me talking about a different sort of son who I also really oh. love. Uh, because you're I'm getting as bad as Simon. I know, I know. I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm uh, learning. We've had a question in uh, from YouTube, uh, from Sarah. Sarah, thank you for your question. And she asks, short but difficult question, why is Jesus the son of God? Who wants to kick us off with giving Sarah a bit of an answer? Well, I understand, I think, why Sarah asked this question. Uh, I know where she works. Oh, and you I used know to work Sarah. there too. Yeah, I wasn't going to tell you. Um, <laughs> Sneaky. But uh, we've got some lovely uh, Muslim students there at uh, the school. And now and again, they'd come up to me and say, Reverend Paul, what's all this with this Jesus being the Son of God and being God? You know, did Allah have sex with Mary and then she had the baby Jesus? And it's all very confusing. <gasps> and just I- said sex. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> so, uh, I can see where the confusion comes from. Good question. So, uh, what's it, one of the creeds? He was there from the beginning with God the Father. Uh, it's the wordiest bit of the creed. It's the bit that there was a lot of argument yeah, yeah. about for many years, so, wasn't it? Isn't it just a, um, in a sense, is Jesus is God's son because um, he is born of Mary, isn't it? And uh, through the virgin birth. So he is, God is his father in that sense. And the reason I think that it's all to do with God revealing who he truly is to us, right? So in that culture, um, father and son were thought to be the ultimate close relationship. And also as well, it's a a symbol of inheritance. Mm. So it's, in a sense, it's to do with God, God the father and God the son are equal in the sense of the Trinity, but the reason he is the son is a way of us understanding yeah. the closeness of the relationship. And also as well, it's a way of us understanding inheritance. So we become, as Christians, co-heirs with Christ. Oh, so that's yeah. the idea that we so, become yeah. sons of God. And that's so powerful, and I think. No, 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 no. It we does become so, oh, I was so going there. No, 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 no. This is really important. This is really is. important because Mary Magdalene, and all the early Christians were seen as sons of God, and the point that they're sons is to say that they are equal to men. Because it's culturally because it's, loaded. Because term. it's to say, yeah, because what they're trying to say is that there is no distinction between the relationship between a human being and God as far as gender goes, which is an amazingly radical thing to say in the ancient world. Yep. So that's that's really important. It's really important, uh, along with all the discussion about children and their importance to Jesus. You know, they were the dispossessed. They were the people that had no voice at all. Yeah, they were um, they were non people really, weren't they? In that culture. But so it's so powerful that we get this language, and that Jesus says these things. 
in, in scripture, you know, Abba Father, calling out and encouraging us to have the same relationship with God. Mm. We are not just ordinary, everyday, boring people. Each one of us are precious, special, individually created, and God wants to have a relationship with us. Mm. And I think that Jesus being God's son is so important because we know that we are. That's right. Yeah. There's, also, definitely... there's, also, there's also a Roman hashtag in there, isn't there? In that, to use the phrase son of God was claiming uh, a, a ruling position, you know, emperor, Roman yeah. emperor, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. son of God. So and if you go look into the Old Testament, there's all sorts of stuff as well with Daniel uh, talking about being the, the son of God and prophesying. You know, there's all sorts of stuff here. If you want to get more technical, it goes deeper and deeper and deeper yeah, yeah, and yeah. deeper. The and there's a lot of cultural stuff that we, we, we don't, uh, we we don't, don't get. Yeah. And actually, we do need to be doing better we, at translating. But we need to understand that as well as but to talk about Jesus God emptying himself of yes. his power. And the reason that Jesus is the son of God is as opposed to Caesar who said he was the son of yeah. God and all these other people, which is saying, because I'm the son of God, that means I can dominate and oppress you. Yeah. And Jesus is saying, to be a son and to be a God is about emptying myself yeah. of all power. It's to be like God. It's and to actually, be like God, yeah. yeah. And it facilitates all of those amazing stories about fathers and sons mm. the prodigal son no matter mm. what you do you are welcomed back yeah god welcoming each one of us that idea that you know some people were so narrow-minded and so selfish that they took um, a landowner's property mm. they wouldn't give it back they wouldn't pay for it when people went and asked for the money mm. even they sent the owner's son to mm. reclaim the debt, and they killed him. I think you know, it's, it's, there's that's... so much powerful material. So, do you that's... think then that, that we could? Because I think we agree that the, we're basically answering the question was because there were lots of people claiming to, to they, they were using that language to mean things that God isn't like, mm. and so it was a really powerful symbol of oh no, God is like this, radically loving, the opposite of what you've been doing. So that. And the parables obviously are meant to be stories that live and to tell us about our context. So is there another way for us? So could we say today, because we don't have the father-son cultural thing, could we say that now Jesus was the daughter or child of God instead? Because we don't have a male, it, picking at what you just said about actually, if in that way he was saying people, gender neutral, but now we say son, it, it means male, but not everybody. Oh, so the word we? father is quite difficult. It is, it is. And actually that father-son thing, for lots of people, doesn't mean any of that about inheritance and about stuff I think like if, that if, anymore. If God was going to reveal himself in South Wales Valley culture, mm. right, yeah, then it would be mother and son, right? Because that's mother the, and son. That's the ultimate... Son. right. Uh, no, because that is the ultimate sort of right. close, yeah, yeah, close yeah, yeah. relationship, yeah. right? That's yeah. what I mean. That's I what I mean. So it depends on what culture God chose to reveal himself within, right? Yes. And what we have to do is translate that culture into our own one. And, and because you... at the essence, it's not a literal, a literal thing. And this is what the creed got to the heart of. It's saying, no, no, no. It's not that he literally is the son of God in that way that you're trying to understand is it's how God as the Trinity mm. reveals who he is to everybody yeah. and that will change culturally yeah. and there is um, in the Christian tradition a long tradition of God being uh, the mother and all sorts of other things like mm. that which um, isn't very difficult to find. No, and so the main kind of, just to try and summarise, is that it is that cosmic uh, rescue that, that we have. God came um, as a person to show mm. us how to be a person, to show us how we're supposed to live, um, and that that is what we are invited to take part in now, that, that close, unbreakable, completely unconditional relationship with God, who is endlessly outpouring love. Um, and so... That is why we worship a God who is uh, God as a person and as a human. And, and we need it told in our language. So it, 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 it's a very helpful question because it kind of, we don't get to talk about this stuff very much. We use the phrase God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit without really getting back to it other than reading out the creed every single time. So uh, thank you, Sarah, for asking us. And hopefully some of the stuff that we've said has been, been helpful. It's, it's one of those that could just go on and on. Uh, but please keep those questions coming. See you next time. 
Is anyone going to talk techie stuff like Pomoousius? No. No. Well, it's one direction is that, I thought about. Is that about. vegetarian or vegan? <laughs> Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and send us in your questions at TGI Monday. How you it? smiled. It did? You smiled. You've got this gorgeous smile. Yeah. It's like um, Jack D, you're not used to it. <laughs>